Hello guys and welcome back to the Trademark Sports YouTube channel. Today we're going to be running through every single position in the NRL to come out with who's the best player in that position and basically come up with what would be the best team in rugby league. Uh, if you're excited for the return of the Trademark Sports YouTube uh, videos, drop a thumbs up. If you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button for more content throughout the NRL season. But without further ado, let's crack on straight into it. We'll start with the back and make our way through to the forwards. So first position, cover off the rank, is fullback. We might be here for a little while because there's plenty of players to talk about. Uh, so basically, fullback's the, probably, honestly, the most stacked position within the NRL. Uh, every club seems to have an absolute stud there. Uh, so let's talk about it. Uh, fullback, we've got Kalen Ponga, last year's Dalian medalist. Tom Drabojevic, 2022's Dalian medalist. Ryan Pappenhausen, probably both of those years Dalian medalist if it weren't for injury. Latrell Mitchell, gun. James Tedesco, best fullback of this generation. Scott Drinkwater, Dylan Edwards, Clint Gutherson, and Reese Walsh. Take your pick. There's genuinely an argument about all of them. Like These kind of guys, in certain attributes, are all the best in the competition. If you look at the, the most well-rounded player, though, like, with all this, so, Caleb Pong is an absolute freak. He just needs to do what he did last season for, like, more consistently. Tommy Trebojevic and Ryan Pappenhausen, injuries are the big concern there. Latrell Mitchell, his work ethic, probably, like, the fact that he can absolutely turn on a blinder. However, he doesn't do it that consistently and that often, which is his biggest downfall as a player at the moment, I think. James Tedesco is probably the best all-round fullback there, to be honest. He's done it for so long, and he's showing again this season how good he can be. Scott Drinkwater, for me, is so underrated. He is a sensational footballer. His work ethic, his work rate is insane. He's everywhere. His ball playing is really good. His running game is sensational. He's so underrated. Uh, Dylan Edwards, again, a similar player to Scott Drinkwater. I just think his ball playing isn't as good uh, as Scotty Drinkwater. Gutho, workhorse everywhere all the time sensational player he's the kind of player that you'd love to play with hate to play against because he's just there all the time and Reese Walsh excitement personified he is a sensational player but I do think I'm gonna have to give the best fullback in the comp to James Tedesco now I know he's had a couple of poor, like not poor years but not years that like as as good as we've seen 2018 2019 but I think like he was still really really good and I think just the fact that he was so good in those couple of years is makes people think that he's sort of fallen off a little bit, which he might have, but 2023's form, 2024, sorry, his form has been really, really good. And I just think he's been up the top for so long that he has to be the best fullback in the competition. All right, let's go to wingers now. The the selection panel that I have here, people to choose from, we've got Brian Toto, obviously, Dom Young, Alex Johnston, Taruva, Zach Lomax this season, uh, the Fox, Murray Talangi, Dallin Martinez Lesniak, and Jermaine Sarko. All right, let's tick one off the board straight away. Brian Toto. Sensational. I just love it like, every single week, though, now. Um, it's always Brian Toto up against this next tall two meter winger. Yeah, he's going to go good, like he has every single time. He's actually really good in the air, and his height and his stature has never been an issue for him, so I don't understand why we still have this rhetoric. Um, other guys to look through here, Dom Young, would like to just see him do what he did last season more consistently. He started the season quite well for the Roosters, although we'll have a bit of time on the sideline now after basically trying to take Blake Taft's head off. Um, Alex Johnston, really, really good finisher. Other parts of his game sort of aren't up to standard with what you'd want from a winger these days. Taruva, again, an absolute freak on the wing. Work ethic, uh, coming out of his own, he'd be so hard to tackle. Um, Zach Lomax, again, I, I really think now, from watching him play, he's a winger. He's a premier winger in the competition. I think he, the sooner he realizes that, the sooner he plays state of original football. That is my call there. Um, the Fox, last couple of seasons, I mean, just in that Bulldogs team in general, he's sort of teetered off a little bit, but I still think he is a sensational player. Murray Talungi, again, like Drinkwater, underrated as anything. Really, really good. Kills it in origin. Dylan Martinez Lesniak last season proved what he can do. And then Jermaine Asako again proved that there's a really, really good footballer in there. But the guy that I'm going to 
pair with Brian Toto. I think we're going to go for Taruva. Just at the moment, I really think that those two are the premier wingers in the competition and they just lay the platform so well for the Penrith Panthers. Um, and without them, I don't think they have the success that they do. Now, moving to the centers, it's another position like fullback that is just genuinely so stacked. Uh, the names I'm looking at right here are ridiculous. So you've got Valentine Holmes, Joseph Manu, Stephen Crichton, Campbell Graham, Herbie Farmworth, Isaac Tongo, and Katoni Staggs. Now, for me, in those names, there are two standouts. However, I say that, but the guys just below are so close. Um, so my, I'll just say it straight away. The guys I've got, Valentine Holmes and Stephen Crichton. Stephen Crichton, for me, is the best center in the competition, best center in the world. So good defensively, so good with the ball. Um, yeah, I just I think he's unbelievable. Still only 23. We're going to see him for a long, long time. And Valentine Holmes has just been so good for so long. He's so elusive with the ball, good defensively. Like His all-round game as a center is phenomenal. Joseph Manu, another player who's really right up there. Um, again, does it on both sides of the ball. That's what I look. That's what I really look for in my centers. Like, yeah, okay, you've got a guy, like one of those names there, Katoni Staggs, with the ball, is an absolute freak. Probably needs to inject himself into games a little bit more, but defensively, there's some issues there, so that's why I don't have him as one of my top two centers in the comp. Herbie Farmer, again, really, really good with the ball in hand. Defensively, there are laps there. Isaac Tongo is right up there. He's definitely in that next step below those top two guys and then same with Campbell Graham I think he just gets better and better every single year fortunately we haven't seen him this year due to his sternum injury hopefully he returns towards the back end of the season and proves why he's one of those elite centers moving to the halves now 5'8 honestly probably has the least depth out of every single position in the whole competition which is interesting because it's such a vital position the guys here on my short list are Cameron Munster Dylan Brown Tom Dean and Cody Walker Whoever, no, Cameron Munster runs away with that. Absolutely. He's been the best 5'8 for probably the last, more, honestly, the last maybe 10 years. He's so good. Um, Tom Dearden, again, is probably the next best there for me. I just think he's still only 22. Yeah, that's concerning as a Blues fan. Um, halfback will go there again super stacked there's like what well, I think 8 of them that are just top tier uh, Nathan Cleary Daly Cherry Evans who just gets better with age he's so good um, Mitch Moses Nico Hines Adam Reynolds Ben Hunt Jerome Hughes who's interesting because Jerome Hughes isn't your typical 7 I don't think like I actually don't think he does that much of the organising for the Storm um, and Sean Johnson uh, Nathan Cleary is by far and away the best halfback in the competition. Well, I'll say that, but last season, um, Sean Johnson was really, really, really good. Probably the best halfback over the course of the whole year. And then Daly Cherry Evans as well. All credit to him. He just gets better with age. He's 35, and he's one of the, probably, he's probably the second or third best halfback in the competition. He's so good, but Nathan Cleary at 26. Yeah, what he's going to do over the next four or five years is going to be scary, oh, I think. I really think he does dominate this season in origin with a guy like Mitch Moses or Nico Hines with him in the halves. Um, front row. Top heavy, but there's some studs here. First two names, look, they're by far and away the best front rows in the competition. Okay, Payne Haas, James Fisher-Harris. Other guys got on my short list, Joseph Tarpane, severely underrated. Regan Campbell-Gillard, again underrated. Um, he's proper partner, Junior Bolo is sensational. That try assist he had for Mitch Moses against the Tigers, so silky. Like, that ball work for a big man, nuts. Was it against the Tigers? Might not have been. No, it was against Manly. It was crazy. Um, Tino, again, workhorse, stud, really, fingers crossed for him for a quick recovery. Ruben Cotter, sensational. Work ethic out the window. Um, Lindsay, Lindsay Collins, again, heavily underrated. Not really talked about in those conversations about the best front rowers in the comp. I think last year he really proved that he is one of those. And a guy I've got here, now, I don't think he's one of the best front rowers in the competition yet, but he certainly will be in years to come. Leo Thompson, man. He's awesome. It's like his third year of rugby league ever. And he's so good. Like, I think he's 25. By the time he's 30, he'll be one of the best front rowers in the comp. No doubt about it. You can book that one in. Uh, and we'll move on to Hooker. 
again, there's a really uh, clear standout. First name off the cab, first cab off the rank. Yep. Um, Harry Grant, sensational hooker. His running game, elite. Never gets caught out defensively. Really, really high work. His fitness is sensational. Best hooker in the comp. Wade Egan has certainly put himself up there as one of the better hookers in the competition under Andrew Webster. Really, really good. Damian Cook has been like there and thereabouts for a long time. Starting to probably teeter off a little bit. I don't think he plays out of Origin this year. There's a hot tip for you. Uh, someone who I do think will play Origin this year, Api Korosia. He's been phenomenal for the Tigers to start the season there. Really like, been a leader for that team there. And Reese Robson, again, he, so he played Origin last season, and I, I tipped that he would. However, I thought that maybe his form didn't really warrant it last season. I thought he was going to kick on a bit more um, than he did, but he's done that this year. That He's really shown and proved to me, well, proved to me, proved to everyone, um, like the kind of player he is, and has definitely sort of accelerated off that platform that he laid for himself as an NRL player, and he's becoming one of the elite nines for sure. And then I've also got Reed Marnie there. On his day, he is one of the better nines in the competition. However, those days are sort of starting to get a bit further and further apart. I think if the Bulldogs hit some form, we'll see him really start, start to play some of that top-tier footy again that we saw at the Eels. Then second row is, again, stacked. There's so many names here. You know, David Fafita, Viliami Kikiao, Liam Martin, Hamale Olekawatu, Koloa Matangi, Tyson Brazil, Jordan Ricky, Britton Nikara, and Eli Katoa. Another another bold bold little shout there. I think he's sensational and he's gonna by the end of the season he's probably gonna be top five second rounds in the comp. But that's what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine players We've got to try and squeeze into two spots. So that's gonna to be tough. David Fafita, I think last season I was really, really impressed with how he improved his all around game. He wasn't just a dynamic ball runner that was just hitting holes and like that sort of thing. He was Running really good lines, but like also a little bit of ball playing, good defensively. I think he's just all round, all round game really improved last season. Uh, Liam Martin just good luck to a second rower trying to hit him. Like he's just tearing inside shoulders off. Billy Armour kick out again as well this season has been phenomenal. I think just even at the Bulldogs, like the winning percentage with him and without him is crazy. Molo Olakawatu, he learns to run onto the ball, unstoppable. Um, and as well as that, like. Yeah, I just want to see him put a whole season together. Starts the season really, really well. Ends the season really, really well. But sort of always seems to lull throughout the middle. That's why I don't think he's played Origin just yet. Um, another guy very similar, Keon Kaloma Tungi. Sensational second rower. I just don't think he's probably one of the top two just yet. But will continue to have a really good Origin career. Tyson Brazil continues to prove in year in, year out why he's just one of the elite guys. Um, as he gets older, he gets wiser. He's just so good. Jordan Ricky, really, really improved last season. I think like defensively, again, quite good. Um, he's getting just more and more damaging with the ball too. Britton Nicola probably runs the best line in the competition. And then Eli Katoa, again, in that storm system, I think he's going to develop and flourish into one of the best second rows in the comp. I'm probably going to take David Feder and Liam Martin, though, as my two guys. And then Locke, again, there's four standouts here. So Cameron Murray... Pat Carrigan, Isaiah Yo, and Tohu Harris. Good luck. You could pick any of those four, and I would not have any complaints. And you got Jake Jaboyevich and Victor Valley as well. I think it's just that like tiny little bit below them. Uh, Victor Valley on his day definitely can be one of the best locks in the comp. And Jake Jaboyevich is just a toiler. Um, I do think his best position now is front row. He used to be ball player when he was younger. He doesn't do it anymore, which is quite disappointing. But yeah, still, you just got to give him his flowers for how good of a player he's been for so long. I think I'm going to give my lock to Cameron Murray. I just find I just he's a joy to watch playing football. He just hits everything with so much energy. Always finds his front. Really good, quick play of the balls. Great defensively. A lot of tick, a lot of heart. He's pretty much the only player in that Rabbitohs team so far this season that has actually shown that he wants to be out there. Um, but yeah, I just really, really enjoy watching him play football. His ball playing as well is phenomenal. I'd love to see him be the New South Wales lock this season. Um, so that gives us a team of James Tedesco, the fullback, Brian Toto and Taruva on the wings, Valentine Holmes and Stephen Crichton in the centres, Munster at 5'8", Cleary at halfback, 
Haas and James Fisher Harris in the front row, Harry Grant at hooker, second row for Fida and Liam Martin, and a lock of Ka- um, Cameron Murray. That's a ridiculously good side. Let me know what your side would be in the comments, uh, what you agree with what I said, what, what you disagree with what I said, if there's any players that I just honestly completely forgot to talk about. Um, but yeah, let's have a conversation in the comments. Let's keep it nice and civil. But yeah, if you have enjoyed this video, make sure you like it, subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content. And just remember to always, Scotty, drink your water, and Bradman, do your best.